J&B Restaurant Supply Team with Captain Darian White. Cola Bad Bear with rebounds. Miami. Madison Jackson assists. And your shooter from downtown, Leah Beatty. J&B Restaurant Supply, savor the difference. Good afternoon, everybody. What's up? How you doing? Coulter Nuanez, Andrew Houghton, SkylineSportsMT.com. Also, maybe you're watching on the ESPN MT app. No matter how you're tuning in to all of our new video content, appreciate you for following along. This is a new series we got going on here where we highlight some of the players to watch for the upcoming opponents for both Montana and Montana State football. The Grizz on a bye this week. The Bobcats host the team the Grizz played last week. So, uh, Andrew joins me because... He's the one from the organization that's seen Idaho State live and in person this year. I was at the Bobcat game this last weekend, a 41-24 win over UC Davis under the Bobcat Stadium lights, and now uh, MSU with a second straight home game, uh, Idaho State coming to town. So first of all, Andrew, you uh, spent a couple years there in Pocatello covering Idaho State. How different did this team look uh, to the last one you covered from a couple years ago? I was actually struck a lot by the similarities, Colter. Very interesting. But because they have like 50 new players, right? And obviously a first-year head coach in Charlie Raggle. They have a bunch of new players. Charlie Raggle tried to overhaul the roster when he came in uh, before the season. You know, I think it's going to be a multi-year project for him, getting everybody that he wants on that roster. So all the names are different. In terms of what they look like, they look really similar because it's, you know, an Idaho State team with a couple good players on defense, but a lot of struggles on defense. Yeah. Some really good skill position players on offense, and then everything else they're trying to, to sort of find and, and put together. I watched a couple, you know, I can't say I watched extensively, but I watched moments of the UNLV game, which Idaho State got blown out in. Didn't watch any of the San Diego State game. Uh, watched a little bit of the Central Arkansas game, which was a disappointing loss for Idaho State, getting a uh, somewhat quality FCS program to come to Pocatello and then sort of rolling over and letting Central Arkansas take the game away from them late in the game. And then uh, watched a fair amount of the Northern Colorado loss, which was a very disappointing one for Idaho State, given that Northern Colorado is supposed to be sort of toward the bottom of the conference like ISU. All of that said, coming into last week's game, I thought we maybe sold the Bengals a little bit short in terms of the talent that they have on the roster. We were sort of saying, man, they don't really have any dudes. There's not really any guys that can really compete or even hang with some of the top-level teams. After watching them against the Grizz, I know part of it was they just brought their best effort against the Grizz, but they have some some players that are pretty good, and I thought that actually stood out against the Grizz. I thought there were some guys that uh, were better than I thought and better than advertised in the Montana game. Yeah, the easiest way to look at this is just are they able to get any matchup that they want, that they're able right. to go back to you know, time and time again. If you've got a guy at his position who can give you that mismatch a lot of times, then you've got some talent on your team. I wasn't sure that they would have anybody who could do that, like you said. Uh, but I thought Xavier Guillory, the wide receiver, was a big one and even forced the Grizz to change up their game plan a little bit For to sure. deal I mean, with him. I mean, he even had a couple times when he beat Justin Ford one-on-one, which has been a rare occurrence the last couple of years. Yeah, I mean, after he he had some big catches in the first quarter, narrowly missed a, a big touchdown deep. It would have been about a 70-yard touchdown deep where he had a step or two on Robbie Houck, uh, and it was just a little bit of an overthrow. Grizz started shadowing him with Justin Ford. I thought that Idaho State wasn't scared of that matchup at all. Xavier Gilroy, Xavier Gilroy is supposed to be one of the best uh, receivers in the league. That's what they're touting him as, and he's our first player to watch, former Air Force prep guy who uh, right now among the league leaders, I haven't actually checked the leaderboard again, but he was leading the conference in receiving yards coming into last week, then had seven grabs for 86 yards, so probably at the very least still up toward the top, if not leading the league, 463 total receiving yards, 27 uh, total catches. Montana State head coach Brett Vegan said, uh, in his uh, press conference on Monday, the receiving core at Idaho State, that's the thing that jumps out at you right away, especially uh, 
Guillory, who's specifically, who's very special. He's a very dynamic player. He's not the only one, uh, but he's right up there in receptions in, in the conference and yards per game. He has great downfield ability. He can make all kinds of catches. He's got a knack for doing all the things good receivers do. So that, that's kind of the, the, where it starts uh, with Idaho State on offense. He's a guy who's added some stuff to his game, Coulter, because I was there when he came in coming off that Air Force prep year, sure. and that was sort of a year that they were looking to replace – a couple guys who are among the greatest receivers this league has seen in recent years. That was the year after Mitch Guller left, the year after Mikey Dean left. So they still had Tanner Connor, and they were figuring out what to put around him. And Gilly was one of the guys that, that popped that year, but he really has added a lot to his game because back when he came in, he he was a physical guy. He was like he was a high point guy. He's sure. a guy you'd throw back shoulder fades to. I mean, he's big, and, six, and six him, two, two hundred pounds. Let him go up and get it. He's really good at getting up to the catch point. You know, I've compared him, I think, to Lance McCutcheon when I was talking with Greg Woods last week. That's kind of who he reminds me of. Just the ability to go get those back shoulder fades. I think he's a lot more faster and more explosive than he was, or at least they're using him. They're giving him a chance to show that off a little bit more because he's had several plays where he's able to just beat somebody on the slant and then pull away from everybody in a way like a Tanner Connor used to for Idaho State. Or other no. Yeah, me neither. You know, Bethany Cordell thinks a hot dog is a sandwich. So wrong. I know. You know, I scored 30 points in a game once. Really? No, I got cut my freshman year. Hey, a touchdown. Don't be mean. Another offensive player to watch is Sagan Gronauer, and we'll talk about him in a minute, but the other position group I wanted to highlight for Idaho State that I think was more competitive than I expected was the offensive line. I thought the offensive line did a good job against Montana's pressures. Two weeks ago with the Grizzlies, Portland State had no answer for Montana's now infamous A-gap blitzes where they send Marcus Wellnell and Tyler Flink and you know Michael Matthews and a variety of other guys uh, straight up the gut. Braxton Hill when he's healthy, straight up the gut right at the quarterback after they do a big stunt up front. Idaho State did a way better job of picking that up. I thought Terrence Carey showed pretty well, the center there at Idaho State. Their guards looked big. I don't know how athletic they are, but they definitely have size. And so it'll be interesting to see because I think the Cats have had some inconsistencies defensively, particularly on the back end, which is expected to be one of the strengths of the defense, but has actually been maybe the one instable part of the defense. We'll see what changes with Ryland Ort back in the lineup this upcoming weekend. But the Cats defensive front, especially Sebastian Valdez, I think he's the breakout player in the league right now. I mean, I think he is fast-tracking his way to All-American honors. He's already got six and a half sacks as a defensive tackle, which is an, an absurd number for a guy that plays on the inside. So I think that's a matchup to watch, though. I think Idaho State's offensive line is a little bit better than maybe we thought. They showed that at least against Montana. Yeah, and I'm interested to see what it'll look like this week because I don't know how much of that is just knowing that you have to prepare for Montana's schemes sure. and Montana's blitzers and just being ready for that. But it was really impressive. And Coulter, in the course of this game, ISU lost both of their offensive tackles, at least for periods. Jacob Angel went down, yep. I think, on the first series. And Tyler Clemens was hobbling around a little bit, although I think he played most of the game. But they were really good at picking up. I mean, what the Grizz do is they, they bring more than you can block, but they do that so that they can get the guy free up the A-gap. That's, That's what right. they want. Portland State wasn't able to deal with that at all. ISU was able to deal with that, you know, not by shutting it down, not by stoning it, but at least by picking up the guy coming up the middle and then passing people out to the outside and making it go the long way around to get to the quarterback. And I think, especially with a third-string quarterback in there, that really does reflect well on the center, Teron Carey, who's, uh, I think, a third-team all-big sky guy last year. He's good a guy, player. good player, a guy who I think is probably really similar to a guy like Justice Perkins at Montana State. And sure. he's, he's undersized, but he's been playing for a while. Uh, I think he's really smart. Teron Carey is a guy who I love talking to when I was at Idaho State because he's uh, really smart, really well-spoken, great quote. Um, so I was impressed with that. The offensive line certainly showed a lot better than I expected they would. Scott at SportsMT.com. So our players to watch for the Idaho State Bengals as they prepare to play a Montana school for the second week in a row. They're in Bozeman on Saturday. Last point on that, I think that the Grizz beat you defensively primarily – with speed, scheme, aggressiveness, and execution. It's going to be a, a pretty stark transition than when you're talking about protecting the interior when it comes down to just pure, utter, physical power. Sebastian Valdez, it's not about the scheme. It's about that he's just one of the strongest dudes in the league. I mean, you look at him walk around and you're like, well, wow, how did that guy fall to the FCS? I think he's one of the most physically impressive interior defensive guys I've ever been around. And I'm not even exaggerating. I think that he is truly 
when it's all said and done, will be one of the best NFL prospects to come out of the Big Sky Conference. I think he's that talented, that good, has that much upside. All right, last guy on the offense before we get to some of the Idaho State defensive guys. Uh, second ground hour showed well uh, in his first start. Relatively, I mean, Montana with a 28-20 win in Pocatello, but second ground hour uh, I thought showed toughness. I thought he didn't seem overly flustered, which that's actually a rare occasion against this Grizz yep. defense so far this year. And when he throws it, he throws it nice. I, I think he has good talent. So uh, I asked Brett Vegan about it because Brett Vegan's been around so many great quarterbacks. I said, what kind of jump can you make from start one to start two? And he said, a significant one, because if you just continue to not know what you don't know, yep. it leads you a long ways. And uh, Grant and I were already playing with a little bit of confidence here after his first start. Yeah, I wonder if in a weird way playing against the Grizz actually gives you more confidence because you know that you don't really have anything to lose. If you play right. horribly, I mean, if you throw five interceptions, like that's bad, obviously. Sure. But also it's the third string quarterback starting against one of the best five defenses in the country, maybe the best defense in the country. What do you expect it to do? So when you get in there and you realize that, that yeah, they're tough, they're good, they're going to be coming after me all day, but also they're not superhuman. You know, we have we have matchups that we can exploit with Xavier Guillory in particular. Sure. We can get a couple yards of carry. They're not taking my running back down as soon as I hand the ball off to him. You start getting more confidence because you you don't have that to lose. And I thought that's the way Sagan Gronauer played with some of the throws that he was making. In just a few minutes, small business owners can now sign up for Blackfoot Communication Services. Whether it's dependable voice options or internet services, sign up simply by visiting blackfootsmallbusiness.com. Click on the services you wish, select an installation time and date, and you're done. Small business services at the touch of your fingers. Connect to more with Blackfoot Communications and blackfootsmallbusiness.com. The players to watch defensively for Idaho State, the two we highlighted last week in this same series, Josh Alford, a sophomore corner, and Quantrell Morris-Walker, a sophomore safety. I thought Morris-Walker played well against uh, the Grizz in this last game. And uh, the guy I added to our list is Charles Ike. I think he's a legitimately good player. I think he runs really well, sideline-to-sideline side type of guy, uh, knows for the ball. You look at his tackle numbers, I mean, he ha- already has as many tackles this season as he did all last year, and we're only you know five games in. So I think he's a guy that can certainly hang talent-wise. He had 12 tackles against Montana, and he's got 43 tackles, one and a half tackles for loss already this season. He was another guy that Brent Vegan pointed out. Uh, anybody else that stood out, or what do you think of those guys defensively? I think those guys are the ones to watch. Charles Ike was, again, a guy who took me a little bit by surprise, but doing exactly what you said, being yep. able to go sideline to sideline. I knew that he was a guy who was going to be able to come forward and maybe get off a block and make a hit in the run game. He was a guy who was able to flow sideline to sideline really well, chase down Lucas Johnson a couple times, yep. dropping in coverage. He didn't, he didn't look exactly like a natural dropping into coverage, but Lucas Johnson threw it right to him and he made the play. I, I think he's a, he's a good big sky player. Uh, Jihad Brown, the other cornerback, uh, made a couple nice plays. I mean, he was right there on that wide receiver pass that sort of took Idaho State by surprise, but he diagnosed it really well yep. and got back into the play. Cole Grossman just made a great catch. Those are the guys that I'd be I would be watching. It's a huge transition this week for the Idaho State defense, though, because last week you could tell. Well, here's my analysis: the first four games of the year, Montana's opponents said, "Hey, Lucas Johnson, prove you can beat us." Last week, Idaho State said, "We're not going to let Lucas Johnson beat us." Right, Grizz, prove you can run the ball. Well, there's no question what Montana State wants to do. They want to run the ball straight down your throat. They're going to play with an unbelievable. If they can replicate what they did last week. They're going to play with an unbelievable level of tempo, and if they get Lane Sumner back, look out because you're going to you're talking about Lane Sumner, who's uh, all sorts of juice. He's just as quick laterally as he is fast vertically. Isaiah Elijah Elliott, excuse me, is such an explosive guy out of the backfield, and Tommy Mallott out this week again, the uh, Golden Boy quarterback for the Montana State Bobcats, but. Uh, 6'3", 235 with some speed doesn't lie when you're talking about Sean Chambers. He's a hammer, so I think that's going to be a huge adjustment because Idaho State last week was basically saying, hey, Grizz, are you going to run the ball? We dare you. Let's go ahead and uh, make you do it. The Grizz rushed for over 225 yards. I mean, I can't remember the last time the Cats didn't rush for 250 yards. It's been like half a decade since somebody held MSU under 200 yards rushing. More more than anything, because that's just what they do. They're going to run the ball 50 or 60 times right at you. 
So it'll be interesting to see. I think it's a, a huge transition. Uh, last thing for you, Andrew, then what do you think of that side of this matchup? Can Idaho State hang or hold their own against this MSU rushing attack that's averaging almost 300 yards a game? I think it's going to be tough for them, as you mentioned. You know, they were sort of inviting the Grizz to do that last week. I just don't think they have the depth still, and particularly the depth on the defensive line. I mean, this is a team that their philosophy has been, at least under the last staff, is that they really wanted to stop the run first. I just think that if you are running and you're running with tempo, especially like Montana State does, you can tire them out because they don't have the depth. I mean, you can you can march down the field on them. SkylineSportsMT.com. Stay tuned later on this week. you got several different features coming up. A little bit of a follow-up on Sean Chambers and what led him from Wyoming to Montana State. Also got senior profile on James Campbell and also working on one on Willie Patterson as well. We'll have that one for you either this week or next week. But either way, senior profiles, senior spotlights starting to come out here uh, on the MSU side of things. Thanks to Andrew Houghton uh, for contributing to this week's Player to Watch. And thanks to you for following along. You can always find all of our content at SkylineSportsMT.com. Please go subscribe to the Big Sky Breakdown podcast. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And please keep on following along, keep on reading, keep on listening. We appreciate you for doing so. Skyline Sports, every day, every season. See you soon. Join Town Pump's Pump It Up Rewards Plus program and never pay full price for fuel again. Save five cents on every gallon every day at any town pump across Montana. Plus, earn and redeem points on your favorite in-store items to get free stuff with our clubs. Stop in and pick up a rewards card. Download the Pump It Up Rewards Plus app today. Or visit townpump.com slash rewards to register and start saving. Town.